There's a really interesting phenomenon when assessing professional sportsmen and sportswomen, and that is that they spend all their lives training to make it professionals and be the best in their field, only to retire in their mid-30s, having lived less than half of their actual lives. And the hard truth is that when they retire from a sport they've dedicated their whole lives to, they struggle to find that same purpose going forward. Now one very popular route to go down is media, by being a pundit or journalist covering the sport that they played in. But I'm much more interested in those that decided to use their millions from a life in Formula One to dive into the world of entrepreneurship. And so for this list, I'm including the entrepreneurial ventures of 10 current drivers and retired drivers, ranging from an international arms dealer to the founder of two commercial airline companies. Now, there is a bit of a criteria when it comes to who makes this list. Basically, to qualify, the entrepreneurial venture needs to be a fully independent and self-sufficient activity that results in an undertaking of risk. After all, that is what an entrepreneur is defined as. So, for example, the Lewis x Tommy and Kimi x West Coast Choppers clothesline won't be included because those are just collaborations with relatively low financial risk. Right, so without further ado, let's get into the list. The last one especially is one of the weirdest knock-on effects I've ever seen in Formula 1. So, first up on the list is the oldest man on the grid in F1 right now. That's Fernando Alonso. This two-time world champion currently drives for Aston Martin, having left Alpine in 2022, and well, some of you may have already recognised his company from a wide variety of hats. I'm talking about Kimoa. Routinely branded across the front of most of his hats, Kimoa is a clothing and accessories company founded back in 2017, with inspirations coming from the Hawaiian meaning for Kimoa, which is sitting and watching the sun going down together. Now, since Fernando founded the company, they've served over 150 countries on their digital store. However, in August 2021, he sold 75% of the company to US group Revolution Brands. He may only have 25% of the company, but that doesn't stop him from doing some serious promotion of the stuff. The next guy on the list is someone who is famous for his off-track endeavours. I'm of course talking about seven-time world champion Lewis Hamilton. And Lewis hasn't just got involved in one exciting project, but three. He firstly founded his own Extreme E team called it X44 back in September 2020, who not only just attracted a huge title sponsor, but also won both drivers and teams championship last season. I guess it always helps when you've got nine-time World Rally champion Sebastian Loeb driving for you. He's also dived into the world of sports ownership by joining the Denver Broncos as part of the Walton Penner family takeover of the team. Now, the total takeover price was a huge $4.56 billion, but Lewis held only a 0.2 stake worth around $9 million. Now, the main motivation for Lewis was to try and increase the amount of black ownership in American football. And finally, he's an early investor in plant-based burger chain Neat Burger. Now, Hamilton has invested alongside six other investors, including Leonardo DiCaprio, for a total combined sum of $30 million. And it's a pretty smart investment, with sales of plant-based meats growing 74% in the past three years. I'd definitely keep an eye on Neat Burger, because we could see a lot more of them pop up around the place. Now, we're on to our first retired Formula 1 driver, but I'm still sure the majority of you know who he is. I'm talking about Nico Rosberg. Now, after winning the championship in 2016, he shocked the world by retiring at just the age of 31. Well, he dives straight into the world of business, becoming a serial investor, team owner, and YouTuber. After all, he does have a lot of spare time. Well, firstly, Nico followed Lewis in also creating his own Extreme E team called Rosberg X Racing, meaning the Lewis and Nico rivalry is reborn, but this time as team owners. It's an evolution of Team Rosberg that was set up by Nico's father, Keke Rosberg, back in the 90s. And well, he's also had some success, winning both championships in 2021. Now, Nico has specifically focused all his entrepreneurial activities around environmental support and sustainability, most notably by co-founding Green Tech Festival in 2019. Green Tech Festival is basically a global platform for pioneering sustainable ideas with annual events in Berlin, New York, London, and Singapore. And it's proved very popular, with 200 exhibitors present at each event, with speakers from 20 different countries and total visitors of over 13,000. Of all the guys in this list, it's hard to disagree that Nico's ventures are definitely the most respectable. But arguably, the most respectable person on this list is Jensen Button. Jensen is loved by the majority of motorsport fans, and since his long and successful F1 career resulting in one championship in 2009 and 15 wins, 
he's been a very busy man. After retiring in 2016, he's become a pundit for Sky Sports F1, is a special advisor to the Williams F1 team, and has started up a couple really interesting businesses. Firstly, he's joined Hamilton and Rosberg by setting up his own Extreme E team called JBXE in January of 2021. Now, it should be noted that JBXE hasn't experienced anywhere near the same success as X44 or Rosberg X Racing, with a best result of third in the standings in 2021. However, Jensen has also got involved in a really cool project with a couple other friends by co-founding Radford Motors, which used to be a legendary coach builder back in the 1930s to 1960s. Basically, Harold Radford started the company in 1935 and built some truly iconic cars, before being thrown out of his own company in 1961. Ever since, the company has really struggled, until the past few years where Jensen, Ant Anstead and Roger Belly bought up the company. They mainly work alongside Lotus in terms of coach building, and they've already created their first masterpiece, the Type 62-2, which has been a hit in the automotive world. So all in all, Jensen is a very busy man. Next up on this list is more jaw than man. Of course, I'm talking about David Coulthard. Now, while everyone knows him for having the biggest jaw in Formula 1, he's less known for everything he's been up to since he retired from Formula 1 in 2008. And well, following his impressive F1 career winning 13 races over 14 years, he joined the world of punditry for the BBC, and in 2016 joined Channel 4. But during that time, he co-founded Whisper TV in 2010, alongside Jake Humphreys and Sunil Patel. Basically, Whisper TV is a global network of video production, post-production, and broadcast specialists. Some of the famous work they've done includes producing all of Channel 4's F1 content, as well as getting involved with the Women's Euros football competition, Nissan, Manchester City Football Club, and the Joshua vs Usyk boxing fight. Whisper TV was such a success that in 2015, Channel 4 actually bought a minority stake in the company. And David has also gone on to write a couple books as well, but there's no doubt that Whisper TV is the highlight of his post F1 career. Now, I would argue the next person on this list is the most impressive. I'm talking about the late great Nicky Lauda. His story is so incredible, I actually made a video specifically about his life, so make sure to check that out after this video because it's simply extraordinary. So, Nicky Lauda, known through the film Rush, that documented his racing rivalry with James Hunt, competed back in the 1970s and 80s and won three titles. In 1979, he initially called it a day in Formula 1 and dived bizarrely into the world of commercial aviation. In that same year, he founded Lauda Air, and within six years began operating flights as a charter and air taxi service. By 1989, Lauda was doing long-haul flights from Vienna to Sydney. Eleven years later in 2000, Lauda Air was made a subsidiary of Austrian Airlines before completely merging in 2012. And now usually, when you set off an airline company, you cash your checks and live a lavish life of not having to worry again. But you know what Nicky did instead? He started another airline this time called Lauda Motion, by taking over Austrian company Amira Air in 2016. After a few years operating business and passenger flights, Ryanair announced they would be buying 75% of the company, worth around 100 million euros. You can even still see planes operational today with its iconic Lauda livery. Now, Nicky sadly passed away only a year later in May 2019, but the mark he left on Formula 1 will live on forever. This next guy I'm sure quite a few of you haven't heard of, but his story is one of the more incredible but very bizarre. I'm talking about Jody Schechter, the 1979 Formula 1 world champion with 10 wins to his name that raced throughout the 1970s before retiring in 1980. And well, his career took an interesting turn. He moved to Atlanta in the US and in 1984 founded Fats Inc which stands for Firearms Training Systems. Basically, he built interactive live fire simulators for the military, law enforcement, and private security organizations. And it was even used by the US military in the Gulf War. Well, in 1996, he sold the company to the New York-based private equity firm for a cool $65 million. But he once again surprised everyone by taking another quite unpredictable and random career course. He moved to Hampshire in the UK, and bought 2,500 acres of land to become a biodynamic farmer. Now, over the years, he has become a true expert in organic farming, and has even started his own biodynamic wine called Lavastook Park. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think biodynamic means you basically create a whole ecosystem around what you are growing, so it is completely organic. But please don't quote me on that. 
Next up, we've got Irv the Swerve, Eddie Irvine, who drove most notably as Michael Schumacher's teammate at Ferrari from 1996 to 1999, and actually had a pretty good shot at winning the 99 championship. Now, before Eddie even joined Formula One at the age of 28, he was already a pretty accomplished man in the property arena. However, once he retired, he's developed a multi-million dollar property portfolio. The property he owns ranges from a $17 million mansion in Miami, a $3 million mansion in Dublin, 50 flats around the world, and he converted an old school in Bangor into housing and set up his own sports complex. In April 2006, he was even placed as the fifth richest man in Northern Ireland on the Sunday Times Rich List. Now, based on a variety of sites and reports, his net worth stands at around $120 million. That is quite the success story. Well, the success story of this next man doesn't actually stretch beyond motorsport, unlike everyone else on this list, and that is Michael Andretti. Now, for those that have watched Formula One or motorsport in general, will know the Andretti name is very well known. It all started with Michael's dad, Mario, who was the 1978 F1 World Champion and the 1969 Indy 500 winner. But while it was Mario that put the Andretti name on the map in motorsport, it was Michael who transformed the Andretti name into motorsport folklore. Now, Michael burst onto the scene in IndyCar by winning the 1991 title and was soon called up to Formula One for McLaren in 1993. And well, it simply didn't work out for him. He was replaced by Mika Hakkinen before the season had even finished. So he returned to America and began to explore the team owner and driver route. Well, in 2001, competing now in the kart series, he became co-owner of the Forsyth Green Racing Team. Soon then later in 2003, Michael purchased a majority share in the team before Forsyth Green completely left and gave full ownership to Andretti. The team was renamed Andretti Autosport in 2009, and well, since then, he has expanded into Indy Lights, Australian Supercars, US F2000, American Le Mans, Formula E, Extreme E, and very possibly Formula One in 2026. And well, throughout Andretti Autosport's reasonably short life, they have won 17 championships, with four IndyCar championships and six Indy 500 wins. Question is, can he replicate that in Formula One? So we're on to the last one, and it's got to be one of the weirdest knock-on effects that I've ever seen in the history of the sport. It's about a man called Bertrand Gasho. Now, I'm sure a good 90% of you don't know who this guy is, so let me cue you in. He's an ex-F1 driver who competed from 1989 to the mid-90s, and his story gets interesting in 1991 while he drove for Jordan Grand Prix. While in London, Gasho was reportedly assaulted by a taxi driver and Gasho sprayed him with CS gas, which without his knowledge was illegal in the UK. And well, Gasho was sentenced to two months in prison. Obviously, Jordan needed a replacement and guess who they turned to? A fresh faced 22 year old called Michael Schumacher. Now, if it wasn't for Gasho and the UK's classification of illegal substances, Schumacher may have never got a shot at Formula One. But anyway, Gasho managed to find a different team and raced in F1 until 1995. And well, two years later, he got involved in the world of business. He began working with Hype Energy, who wanted Gasho to get them into F1 sponsorship in 1997. And well, within three years, Gasho was made CEO of the company and certainly led them to Formula One. Most notably, Hype Energy sponsored the Force India team, now Aston Martin, from 2015 to 2018. And you know what the weirdest thing about all of this is? Force India is the same team that Gasho drove for in 1991 when he got that prison sentence. Only difference is the many name changes the team went through in that time. Well, there we have it. That's my list of some of the most interesting and incredible entrepreneurial ventures that either current or retired F1 drivers have dived into. Now, there are many more examples of drivers that have done incredible things away from the track, such as charity, supporting young drivers, or promoting diversity within the sport. And I do encourage you guys to look a bit deeper into your favourite racing drivers because I can assure you you're going to find some really interesting stuff. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments section below which driver you think is the most interesting. And as always, make sure to like, subscribe and smash that notification bell to be reminded of any new videos.